Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 53. And if you want to download this Excel workbook, BI 348 chapter 5 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're in chapter 5, and chapter 5 is all about time series data and forecasting. Now we're going to start off by looking at different data sets. And each one of these data sets has some time variable like month, 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 day, you could have year, and some number. And what we want to do in this video is plot each one of these data sets with a line chart and see what the pattern is. Now, anytime you have some time variable and a number, we can use the line chart to plot the time series. Now, there's going to be a difference. If we actually have a date, like January, February, March, and then some number, if we highlight both of these and use the, the Excel line chart, it will put this on the horizontal axis and this on the vertical axis. However, if we have month or year, the charting engine won't interpret it correctly. And so we'll have to do something different when we have a time variable like this. Hey, but let's just start out with this first one, month and units boomerang sold. We want to plot this and see what kind of pattern it is. Once we see the pattern of our time series, it can help us choose the best forecasting method. Now I'm going to go up to Insert, over to Charts, and there's our line. I'm going to pick with Markers. And sure enough, it put the date which happens to be month and our value. Now, these dates right here are actually official serial number dates underneath with custom number formatting. Click on the chart and go to the plus. I want to access titles. And right here, I see that solid line. So I'm going to type an equal sign. That shoots me up to the formula bar. And then I'm going to say units boomerang sold March. and enter. Horizontal axis, I click equal sign, click on month March. and enter. Click on the chart title, equal sign, and I'm going to click in A1. Now, this pattern here is called horizontal or constant or stationary. And what that means is that there's as if there was a line plotting the mean value from all of these. And it's as if there's a random fluctuation above and below the mean line. Now, actually, in a more advanced forecasting class, you would have other methods besides visual to test whether it's a stationary constant or horizontal method. But here, we're just going to look and see what type of pattern we see. Now, to kind of understand what it means by a mean and a random fluctuation, let's go ahead and calculate the mean plotted against each one of the months. So I'm going to say equals average, highlight these numbers, F4 to lock it. Control Enter and copy it down. Now I want to edit this chart. Right click, select data. That's the real power of charting, or select the chart and go up to Design, Select Data. I want to click Add, and I want to add a new series. The series name will be Mean. Down for the values, I'm going to highlight and delete that, and then highlight the mean and click OK. Click OK. I want to click on the line Control-1 to open up the task pane. I'm going to come over to the Fill bucket, Markers, Marker Options, and say None. Back over to Line. I want to come down here and change the width to something like 1. I don't want it to be too big. And there is an example of horizontal constant or stationary. It's as if there is a mean and there's a random fluctuation above and below. Later in next video, we'll see if we have a pattern like this, we can use either the naive method, the average method, moving average, or exponential smoothing method to forecast from these values. Now I'm going to drag this down here. We're going to look at our next potential pattern that we see. We're going to highlight, insert, over to line. I'm going to select markers, drag it over here, equal sign. Click on D and Enter. Green arrow, axis titles. I see that it's selected. Equal sign, I click on Units, Enter. Equal sign, click on Month, Enter. And so here what we see is it definitely looks like there is a horizontal or constant pattern. 
But all of a sudden, somewhere in March, it jumps. And then it continues on in a similar horizontal pattern. And then sure enough, in March, what happened is a new contract was signed with Rangs of Japan. And so it jumped. But then it continues with this horizontal pattern. Now, if this sort of thing occurs, there are some forecasting methods, like a moving average or exponential smoothing that will pick this up more quickly than if we were to do a method like average all past values. And we will see an example of that later. So that's two patterns we've seen for time series data. Let's highlight this next series of data. And we have months 1 to 24 and sales. And insert over to line. And I'm going to click the line with markers. And you can clearly see that the charting engine did not interpret the month correctly. We're going to right click. The power in charting comes from select data. We see that there is month and sales. Month is the one we do not want plotted. We actually want that over here on our horizontal axis. So I'm going to click Remove for Month. And sure enough, you could see that it's gone. Now, even though 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 24 will show up correctly here, at least in my class, don't hand in any test or any homework if it's not linked. You always want to link it. Even if it happens to be that the charting engine plotted it correctly, you still want to link it. I'm going to click OK. Click OK. And so now we have this one linked as a series. That's the actual numbers. This horizontal axis is linked to this month here. Now I don't need this legend. Delete. I click on the green plus axis titles. Equal sign, and I'm going to say sales. Equal sign month. Equal sign, and I'm going to click on G2 and Enter. So the question is here. Now it looks like there's random kind of fluctuations. But is there some sort of trend, either downward or upward? Now, last chapter, we talked about linear regression. And guess what? You can use linear regression in forecasting also. So this will be a trend pattern. And the forecasting method we will use is linear regression. Now let's go and look at another example here. Here we have days of the week and YouTube views. Now I'm going to highlight days of the week and YouTube views because that's text. The line chart will interpret it correctly. Insert go over to line, and there's our markers. Green plus, axis titles, equal sign, YouTube views, equal sign, day of the week, equal sign. And this is called, in the textbook, the term is seasonal pattern, also known as periodic pattern. If you look through this, there seems to be a pattern in accordance with our horizontal axis, the time variable. Now notice it looks like that if you point to these, there's Saturday looks like to be the lowest. Saturday is the lowest. Saturday is the lowest. So Saturday is always the lowest. And it always looks like Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So midweek always seems to be the highest, but the Saturday value is always the lowest. This is called a periodic pattern. And we can make forecasts not using moving average or exponential smoothing, but we'll use linear regression. And we'll treat the day of the week or the other great a common example in business is quarterly sales. We'll treat whatever the time variable is here that's displaying a periodic or seasonal pattern. We'll treat it as a categorical variable. And we'll break it apart and then build our linear, multiple linear regression model. We actually had an example last chapter of doing that, not with time, but with a, a different categorical variable. Now let's do another example of seasonal or periodic pattern. There's text here, and there's a number there. So insert line with markers. It'll interpret it correctly. I'm going to go to the green plus, say axis titles. Equal sign, revenue in thousands, enter. Equal sign, quarter, enter. Equal sign. There's our chart title up there. 
So the fourth quarter sales always seem to be the biggest. You can see there's quarter four, quarter four. And this is a very typical pattern for many businesses. You can think of a ski manufacturer. Their sales are going to be during winter, whereas a someone who makes swimsuit or summer wear is going to be, their peak will be in the summer. Now, those are periodic or seasonal patterns. Let's see what happens if there is a trend and seasonal. So I'm actually going to click in a single cell. I've been highlighting these every time, but uh, charting engine usually is pretty smart. I'm going to click in a single cell, insert over to line and markers. Drag this over here, green plus access, equal sign, YouTube views, enter, equal sign, day, enter, equal sign, trend and seasonal. And I'm actually going to see if I can stretch this way over here. And look at that. So this is that same YouTube view data. And if you go through here, it is just without exception, Saturday is always the lowest. So we definitely have our periodic pattern or seasonal. But it also looks like there's a slow trend over time upwards. And so our forecasting method here can be linear regression, and we'll combine a slope and x value for the time trend, and then a slope and x value for the seasonal effect, which for us will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And actually, this is not the example that we will use. We will use a, a quarterly example that, that demonstrates the same pattern, that the quarters are clearly a seasonal pattern, but there's an upward trend over time. All right, so in this video, we looked at the different types of time series pattern. We can have a trend and a seasonal pattern. We can have a seasonal or periodic pattern like quarters. We could have a seasonal or pa periodic pattern over days. We could actually have trend and seasonal together. We could have just a trend. We could have a horizontal constant or stationary pattern when there's a sudden jump. And then we can have just a straight horizontal constant or stationary pattern. All right, next video we'll talk about basic methods for forecasting. All right, we'll see you next video.